Good morning, everybody. Brian Newber here again from goldenblack.com, live at home. Where else? Uh, Wednesdays, goldenblack.com, daily uh, quarantine simulcast, uh, our little conversation piece being posted every day on our social media channels, YouTube, goldenblack.com, of course, and uh, our podcast platform at Golden Black Radio. Um, before we get into it, obviously, want to mention our sponsors. This is brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. Want to remind you once again, also, if you want to support your local economy, support your small businesses, and do so through acquiring damn good food, uh, please keep in mind uh, the Sixth Street Dive in Lafayette. Arnie's with locations all over the place, Bruno's in West Lafayette, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette. They're all open for carryout. Please keep them in mind when you're looking for dinner tonight, looking for dinner tomorrow night, whatever it may be. Please keep them in mind. Um, we've been taking, um, this is my Disney Band-Aid, by the way. Uh, I, I told you a few uh, weeks ago about my cracking hands and how they're not really healing well under the weight of all the hand washing and all the hand sanitizer and such. Getting pretty, di getting pretty dicey here. So I've kind of, I finally gotten the band aid route. Don't have normal band aids, so I've got the, the Disney band aid on. Don't mock me. Um, to get back on track here, uh, we've been taking um, suggestions for topics uh, you'd like to hear me uh, speak on, and one of those suggestions came from Dave. Among some of the questions he asked was one of them was about the future of facilities projects at Purdue. And I thought to that end, a topic worth discussing would be the future of the Ross State Stadium uh, project that's ongoing at Purdue right now and kind of where things stand with that, where they're going and kind of what it all means. Obviously, as with every other phase of our world right now, um, things are on relative hold. Um, the video board project in the south end zone is ongoing and barring anything unforeseen will be brought to its conclusion uh, that was paid for in advance it was paid for and as long as the crews can continue to work on the project uh, the project will be seen through to the end that is the single most important part of this project because uh produced prior video board was antiquated old obsolete junk for lack of a better term and I don't think Mike Babinski was entirely joking when he would say that they didn't want to turn it off or couldn't turn it off uh, because they didn't know if it would come back on. Uh, it is that old. Purdue had to buy up all of the replacement parts on the secondary market just in case they needed them. I don't know what they're going to do with those things now. Um, but that was Purdue's greatest anxiety about the stadium. That's that video board going off in the middle of the game or going off at any point and not coming back on. Purdue needed that done, and Purdue will have that done, and it will transform the stadium unto itself because it's it's many, many times larger than the prior one. Uh, it will change the look of the stadium, the aesthetic of the stadium. Things are going to be reconfigured a little bit because it had to move down closer to the field. Um, the... Part of this, too, is that that is a part of the larger project, uh, really the first piece of the puzzle of the larger project that was going to take place, but also part of the, a, a piece of the puzzle that can stand alone, whereas you can just put that in place. It makes sense. It's likely not going to be any kind of eyesore, and once the rest of the project can fall into place around it, it will make even more sense. Um, that's the most important part of this whole thing, was that that short-term thing gets done, and it will. Um, barring anything unforeseen once again. And obviously we live in a world of the unforeseen right now, so uh, that bears mentioning. The rest of the project, obviously indefinite hold. Um, this is not the time to be pri privately raising more than $100 million for a stadium project. Clearly the economic realities of this time are going to make that very difficult. So everything beyond the video board right now is on indefinite hold, and that could be a long-term hold for all we know. Uh, obviously, the world has to get right uh, before any of this can move forward. Purdue's football stadium is the least of anyone's concerns. Uh, a lot of people who would probably have given a lot of money for this project probably now have economic reasons to rethink that, although the people people who have money are probably always going to have money, whether they're, they're, they're giving it to uh, football stadium projects from here on out. I don't entirely know Purdue 
Uh, this has not been its first priority these last few weeks, obviously, but once the time comes for them to revisit this, you know, uh, we'll kind of see where things go from here. But this project is on indefinite hold beyond the video board. Might not be the worst thing in the world either, uh, because a couple reasons. One, and more importantly, we don't know what normal is going to look like when all of this is over with. Is are the days of 80,000 people sitting in each other's laps at a college football game, is that what the future still looks like? Uh, we don't know. Uh, whatever social changes come out of this um, aren't entirely clear, aren't to be known at this point, obviously. Uh, it could change the way we digest live sports in person. You know, if there is a season this year, um, who knows? Uh, if there is a season this year played without fans, does that condition people to realize, hey, this isn't such a bad deal watching this at home? You know, per, I, I, I know the game day experience is something unto itself. Does a year without the game day experience make people realize, hey, watching on TV is cool too. I can, I can make burgers. I can make hot dogs in my backyard, same as I could out of the trunk of my truck. And save all that money, uh, and save all that travel, save all that time. That, on top of pot the potential anxieties people might feel about crowds, uh, that is going to be part of life after this, uh, all across the board. I think this is going to change the way we interact with one another for a large number of us. Social anxieties will come out of this. Who knows what uh, attending sporting events in person look like uh, from here on out? We just don't know. Putting this project on hold right now, um, you know, might afford Purdue an opportunity um, to get a lay of the land in that sense and proceed accordingly. Um, you might not need something like this after this. You might not want to make a tremendous investment in a product that is going to draw more people out to a sporting event at a time where more people might not be so inclined to go to sporting events. We don't know, but I think putting this project on the back burner for a period of time, albeit not by choice, gives Purdue an opportunity to maybe predict or look ahead to what things look like and tweak the project accordingly. I think that can be tremendously valuable for them because the last thing you want to do is rush into an expensive project, have something like this happen, and then not find the use, not get the value out of it that you intended to have, which could be an unintended consequence, obviously, of all that's going on right now. The other part of this, too, where I think it, it you know, this might be in Purdue's best interest a little bit, too, to have this kick down the, the road a little bit, this can kick down the road a little bit, is that this is a really important season for Purdue football, a really important season. Uh, don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, don't want to make more of it than it actually is. But Purdue experienced a great deal of momentum, a great deal of excitement through those first two years uh, after Jeff Brom's hiring. That created the demand Purdue was addressing uh, with the stadium plans. Obviously, last year, a lot went into last year. A bunch of guys got hurt. Uh, that was no small part of why Purdue went 4-8. and eight. But regardless, Purdue went 4-8. and eight, And now they're in a situation where they have to recapture um, what happened those first two years. And that is not necessarily an easy thing to do. Uh, so we will see uh, what sort of momentum the football program can generate and by extension, what sort of demand uh, for the stadium project, the stadium accommodations, whatever would come with it. We will see what demand actually looks like based on the product on the field. This is a really important season um, for Purdue football to kind of get back to proving to everyone they are building towards something much bigger than this and that four and eight didn't stall their momentum and kind of bog them down, um, you know, in that, you know, four to six to seven win range each year. People, I think, had reason to believe in 2017, 2018, that Purdue was building towards something in the 10 win, nine, 10 win uh, realm. And I think that this is an important season for Purdue to convince people that that is uh, still Purdue's reality to come. Um, and obviously interest dictates demand. Demand dictates what you do with your facility. And this will be 
both a year for Purdue to gauge the lay of the land in terms of social considerations to take into account when moving forward with the stadium project, but also demand. And uh, whatever this season is going to look like this year, if it's a full season, if it's a season played without fans, if there's a season at all, it is an important season for Purdue football to convince its fans um, things are still moving in the direction uh, that they were given reason to believe it was in those first two years under Jeff Brom. So that's kind of where the stadium project is right now, in my view anyway. I think my view is pretty consistent with reality here. Uh, I would expect a gigantic, awesome video board uh, in ross Haid Stadium um, come September. Whether or not they can use it, that remains to be seen. Uh, as for the rest of the project, I wouldn't hold my breath uh, because that could that could be kicked years and years and years down the line if it if it happens at all. We shall see. So uh, if you were getting your hopes up for this immaculate palace um, of a ross Haid Stadium, um, Come September, uh, I think you're probably just going to have to settle for an awesome video board and all the other upgrades they've made to the facility uh, the last couple of years, including the ribbon board last year, which I thought was really cool. Um, so that's what I got. That That's uh, Purdue's uh, Ross Haid Stadium project in a nutshell. And putting a stadium in a nutshell is no small feat. So there you go. Uh, this has been your goldenblack.com daily quarantine. I'm forgetting the name of this thing. How is that possible? Our daily quarantine uh, simulcast brought to you once again by our sponsors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, for, um, follow Purdue Bookstores, sorry, I forgot one there, the uh, First Source Bank, East End Grill, Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. want to remind you once again that um, if you're looking to support our local businesses or just get a really good dinner, please keep in mind the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant Lafayette. Arnie's with multiple locations all over the place, Bruno's in West Lafayette, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette all rem remain open for carryout orders. You will not be sorry if you patronize any of those businesses. Also, if you're accessing this via YouTube, I should remind you once again, please subscribe uh, to our page. At some point in time, the world is going to start spinning again, and we will have lots of Purdue stuff on there that you'll want to get access to right away, I'm quite certain. So uh, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. and. Uh, Check back with us again tomorrow on Thursday for yet another uh, goldenblack.com daily quarantine. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.